How you guys doing? This is Matt and Mike with Team Diecast. We're here with a, another uh, Codex review for you guys. Or technically supplement. Oh yeah, supplement. My bad. We're doing the Space Marine thing. The uh, this this hot one right here is one of probably my favorites I've seen so far of just books being released. This is the Space Wolf supplement. This thing is sick. All I gotta say. Thunderwolf Cav and Dreadnoughts. <laughs> oh yeah, they've added tons of great stuff. Um, the formatting is the same one that we've seen. Um, another good thing, uh, which is kind of a creepy thing to say when talking about GW stuff, for them, the supplement is fairly inexpensive comparatively, but if you add the Space Marine core stuff to this, then it's kind of still at the typical what you expect to get raped by GW by, but um, that is correct. But I give credit where it's due. Oh, yeah. Definitely, they did knock off ten dollars off of what the book a book normally costs through them. So instead of seeing that forty dollar price tag, this one was thirty, which is Not definitely a big bad. plus because yeah. I was expecting that it to cost. Like 40 bucks. It must have been because it was like near Christmas or something, though. I don't expect <laughs> to see that from GTOs again. Uh, but otherwise, all the new formatting is staying the same. Very true. Absolutely. Um, still super easy to read, easy to go through. Um, everything's lined out nice and neat in the supplement. The ingenuity on the side of uh, Games Workshop, though, they. Uh, they threw some really good stuff in, and I'm not familiar with a lot of the rules from beforehand, like previous editions, say 5th through 8th and such, but what they have now, I would say, is very impressive. I really like the look of the army. Yep. Um, but here we go. Cracking right into this. Um, the first things that they go through, you know, skipping all the fluff... You know, Literally. if you're interested in reading that, that's definitely a good chunk of fluff in there. Forty or thirty-nine pages of fluff. So it gives you a good chance, a good chunk. The uh, but where we're at now, the the hot stuff here. All right. They have the successor chapter crap, which I'm not a big fan of. But they do cover stuff with that, as well as combat patrol. They show the picture of what the combat patrol little starter set looks like in there. Which that's cool. Um, the detachment ability. The big thing that you get for being Space Wolf is while you're in the Assault Doctrine, you get exploding sixes yeah. for additional hits. So that's always awesome. And it's on unmodified hits, which is the big trend in this edition is getting rid of modifiable exploding abilities. Which is awesome, even though I'm a... Necron player who had that ability to blow that Tesla up ridiculous like I still think it's better in the end the the unmodified sixes and especially if you ran into Nurgle or Eldar with the neg threes oh to my hit Lord and then in the old edition your plasma used to explode on what a four up or a four or lower <laughs> yeah, yeah that was terrible yeah that's all stuff i'd like to and they they talk about people getting feel bads now just from like tournaments and stuff they no one was worried about those rules back then oh yeah those are feel bad rules oh yeah those are definitely feel bad rules but i like that it's um they're keeping with a trend on that it's still very powerful Especially since uh, most Space Wolves, if you weren't already familiar with them, are very assault-based. So they dump tons of dice in the assault. So. Oh, yeah. This is, that's one of my favorite parts about this codex is, like, the amount of dice that are thrown during the assault phase by these guys is just insane. Oh, yeah. Um, they go through the typical formatting of, in their stratagems that we've seen, which is Awesome. And I like how they're theming each stratagem section to kind of what they do still. So. Um some of the some of the hot things though about the Space Wolves is the their stratagems and their abilities allow them uh it's it's a lot of re rolling like wounds. Um or pluses to wound depending on the one. Yeah, or pluses to wound. And 
it seems it seems really cool that they're they're doing something like that rather than having that be part of like every army's thing. They I think they really created a uniqueness in these guys. Right. Um, one of the big stratagems is their first one right off the bat. Two CP, go for the throat. It gives your yes. whole army, not just a unit, your whole army, rending, which is plus one or an additional negative one to your AP on rolls of a six. And that is crazy, the fact that it does the entire army. It basically, that, that point in time... When you're going to have 80% of your units or so that are all in close combat and ready to just kick ass, you might as well drop the 2 CP and get the extra right. rending out of it. It's only usable when your Assault Doctrine is going, but if you're playing Space Wolves, that's turn 3. You're not dragging that stuff out. Yep. Alright, um, bunch of different things. Um, they gain the ability to outflank mod or the units in their army. Which, that was one thing that we were talking about. It, it escapes to you pay 1 CP to outflank rather than 1 CP per 10 power level. Yeah. And um, I believe that that's the... We're believing that that's the purpose behind that one there. Um, however, I didn't crack open the rule book to All right, <laughs> make um, sure we understood. We're not going to cover every one of these, but we'll go over like the bigger ones. They still have, you know, some of their storyline specific stratagems for anti factions they hate. So, oh yeah, bad shame on T sense. <laughs> um, they got oh, there's so many good ones. Um, Savage Strikes. Um, if you have a small unit, five or fewer, cost one. If it's larger, it's cost two. But you get plus one to wound if you assaulted that turn. That's just amazing. Like, there's there's nothing bad about that. Oh, yeah. I Trying could. to steal a little Blood Angel Thunder there, but, you know. <laughs> well, then maybe they're just previewing something for you. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see what they do there. All right. Um, then they got Pack Hunters. This one is kind of an interesting one. This one is actually a stratagem that takes strategy to use instead of just point and click and, you know, boom. If you have a enemy unit tied up in close combat and you select one of your beast or cavalry models or units, you can roll 3d6 on a charge into that unit, discarding the lowest. And then when you get there, when the wolf portion of those units attack, you can reroll wounds. Ooh, that's nasty. That's not bad at all. The uh, and especially for two CP, I mean, it guarantees that unit to get in there. So you assault with some, you know, bullshit like, you know, intercessor squad, and then you have your cav come in at that longer charge or whatever, mm -hmm. and just slam it home because they get the bonuses to assault there. They get the bonuses to wounding them. Yeah, it's it's definitely a pretty powerful. It's it's a pretty powerful strat and realistically before that turn three portion where where you're getting your um where you're activating your doctrine there yeah um you're really going to be using your cp defensively oh yeah and there's not that many to where it's going to burn up enough cp that way on turn three you can really lay the hammer down with it oh yeah um this one was kind of interesting you get, instead of consolidating three inches, you can in consolidate an additional three. So you get six inches total of consolidation. Which is awesome. You get six inches will take you into a next unit if possible. Um, for those of you who are not, who are not like super familiar with the rules, the consolidation comes after, um, after your close combat. Or you can um, really wrap around that unit. Yeah. Tie yeah. them up really well hopefully make it to where they have to use the stratagem to get out the breakout strat the next stratagem which is pretty cool um cloaked by the storm this is for your psychers out there whenever they cast a spell or the, until the next psychics phase it gives them a neg one to hit bubble of six inches around him 
That is absolutely amazing. 2 CP to give you a 6 inch bubble of neg 1 to hit. And all you gotta do is just cast a psychic. It's cast a psychic power, right? Yep. That's goddamn amazing. Like, amazing. Next up, Deed Worthy of a Saga. This one's kind of interesting. This allows one of your characters that are not that do not have a warlord trait to gain the benefit of a deed if they completed the requirement for one. Basically, you have a bad motherfucker who needs to get a really cool ass ability for kicking the crap out of something he probably shouldn't have. Oh yeah, that one's definitely cool. You can give um, Thane of the Retinue. This allows one of your sergeants or pack leaders the ability to carry the generic war gear, the special issue war gear stuff. So you could give them a frost weapon, a mastercraft weapon, you know, that type of stuff, digi weapon, all those different things out of the special issue. None of the really big, bad, brutal, you know, relics. But this is in addition to your normal relics that you gave all your characters anyway. Yeah, dude, this is it's pretty awesome. And especially, like, I'm a huge fan of the frost weapons, just that those those things are just so cool. Let's see, um, Warrior of Legend gives your Warlord an additional Warlord trait. With Space Wolf? Wow. Super necessary. These guys are like, like, this, the Warlords, the characters in Space Wolves, named and unnamed, like... They're just, you can build them to where they're just amazing. Um, oh, yeah. And you can take the named ones, which are just amazing. And I uh, I really think that giving that extra Warlord trait, uh, you know, later on when you see what we've gone into, or what they what they have available, I should say, you'll, you'll understand why I think that's a necessary oh, yeah. strat. Um, this one is probably the <clears throat> biggest one that I was excited to see, yeah. which I really hope they give the Blood Angels as well in their own version. Um, Bestial Nature allows you to count as if you're in the Assault Doctrine instead of the current Doctrine. Super. Wow. For super one unit. Cool. Boom. All of a sudden, if you get that turn <clears throat> one or turn two charges in, you have them count as Assault Doctrine. Whoa. Yeah, it's again. This is this is one of those strats that that's going to be used probably every round. The first three <laughs> rounds, it's definitely going to be used, yeah. or the first two at least. You know, as long as you can make sure, yeah, as long as you can make sure that you can get get that off and get them into combat, like it's oh yeah, it's a done deal. Um, that counter charge was also a really cool one. Um, the fact that you can use, uh, what was it? Heroic Intervention. Yeah. For yeah. six inches for any of your units. But if it's a character, it's for free. If it's a unit, it's one point. Yeah, that's it. Like, one CP, and that's for any unit. Or, if any character is just there, you're like, oh, well, it's a Heroic Intervene, and go kick the shit out of whatever you brought in. Yeah, uh, Keen Senses... Allows you to ignore modifiers on attacks and charge rolls. You heard that right. I hear all the custodians cry with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tanglefoot grenades, what is that? <laughs> right. Well, and that also um, that also shuts down like uh, the repulsor executioner, right? So the it has that, that repulsor yeah. field. Yeah, the repulsor strat, yeah. The, oh yeah, it's a strat now. That's right. But yeah, that would shut that down. That's crazy. Also shuts down all those negative hit modifiers for Nurgle and Eldar and all them. <laughs> all those guys can go to hell. Oh, yeah, no, they, now, they all go to hell. Fucking now this life. one was really cool. Um, where a lot of the armies out there have that roll a four up, ignore a psychic power. Well, with the advent of psychic actions... Their new stratagem here for Space Wolves was really cool. The Runic Wards. It gives a, any Space Wolf unit within 12 inches of the caster the ability to deny the Witch. Which you can deny psychic actions. You cannot ignore it because it's not a power on the 4-up. So this is a big 
thing to let you actually try to stop scoring out there. Yep, because if you're if you're within that range, that twelve inch range, mm -hmm. then uh, you can you can shut down that psychic action to uh, what was it the the psychic one they have to do like three three times I think yeah like three times and you can, you can or the interrogation them. or something like that oh that was right there's interrogation too I don't play with enough psychers it's hard for me to remember that shit but needless to say people have used it. And I guess to some degree success, but now you have something where you can totally just shit on them. <laughs> or since you're not with uh, most space wolves, you usually only have one psyker out there. That gives you another opportunity to deny the witch on the other side of the field. Like I'm gonna cast time warp. No, nope. right? <laughs> nope. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna deny it. What? You don't have any psychers near? I pay one CP. Yeah, it's a good thing you get one back every round too. Oh, okay. yeah. And that's their new strats that are exclusive to them. Going straight into the Warlord traits now. So, really, there's one that's most important. And that's the one of the bear. <laughs> but well, that's it also at the end of the list. All of them might go through these ones for right. you. Now, um, with the way they formatted it, um, you get Warlord traits and Sagas. Each um, Warlord trait has a Saga to, uh, a directly to it. And um, what the Sagas are, are special abilities that proc in addition to your Warlord trait. It's like getting two Warlord traits for one if you perform a special action during the battle. So, always good. But we're going to go over the traits first and Sagas um, after we go through all the traits. Perfect. Let's kick All right. this off. What do we got? Beast Slayer? Beast Slayer first. This one is pretty awesome. Um, it lives up to its title. You get plus one to your attacks and plus one to wound rolls against monsters and vehicles. Lives up to Beast Slaying. You're killing the big thing on the battlefield. Tell me. Tell me anything bad about that. Like, seriously. That's absolutely amazing. Okay. Especially against things that you need the bonuses to wound. You're getting bonuses to wound. Yes. All right. Next one. Here's one. For oh, you. we got Wolfkin. Yeah. Oh, for the purposes of a shock assault ability, this warlord is always treated as having made the charge move, and makes D three additional attacks instead of just one as a result of that ability. That is goddamn amazing. Yeah. I'm extra attacks. Uh, was it extra attacks always making the charge? Always You're counts. always fighting first, right? No, that one's not always first. That one's you always count as assaulting. So, regardless of what round it is, you oh, always yeah. get the D3 oh my Lord. additional attacks, dude. Awesome, like, and some of the people that you like, some of the like, characters. One like of the quick combos ones. I initially just looked at was Beast Slayer and Wolfkin with that two to go out and hunt th big creatures out there. Oh, yeah, you got one attack uh, to the hit roll, one to the wound roll, and get D3 extra attacks because, you know, you got two Warlord traits. That is nuts. Um, next one up is um, Warrior Born. You get always strikes first. That was also really solid. Like, oh, yeah. Especially they, with... They worded it out a little bit longer than that, but that's the quick sum up version instead of the lawyered out <laughs> especially with all the new stuff that's been hitting like just being able to make sure you strike first and being able to drop your damage before receiving that's that's really huge it can make or break the game all right next up well, we got number hunter. four all right hunter this one is also dude they're all super good um, add one to the advance and charge rolls made for the warlord, and this warlord is eligible to charge in a turn in which it advanced or fell back. So you can run away and then kick ass again, or run towards them and then run more. <laughs> one of the things I see that being really cool with is going in there, charging their um, fodder that's screening out their units, you know, killing a couple of them. Then falling back, running around a little bit, and then charging the thing you wanted to get to next turn. Oh, yeah, Boom. dude. You're just going in there, mulching. Play leapfrog. Yep, just keep leaping. That's nuts. 
All right, next up, Aura of Majesty. Now, this one really caught me because I'm a big fan of chaplains. So, mm -hmm. this increases um, all of your aura abilities by plus three inches, as well as litanies you recite for plus three inches. That's not bad at all. It's up to a maximum of nine, but still, plus three inches, that's a huge bubble. That's an 18-inch, anything right there on the table just gets... Yeah, it well, it it's it is what it is. The the increase to any aura makes it just you know like a tenfold better. All all for just being able to affect that much more of that battlefield. Um, and now the favorite one by Matt yes, here. Yes, this one is dude. This one this is like my favorite. It's called Resolve of the Bear. Each time this warlord would lose a wound, roll a d6 on a 6 up. That wound is not lost, so 6 up feel no pain. In addition to that, each time an attack is made against this warlord, your opponent cannot reroll the wound roll and cannot so reroll cool. the damage roll. That is awesome because so much of that damage that gets done or the potential damage to be done. Um, comes from the ability to reroll so much. It shuts down lieutenants. It shuts down, you know, the command reroll. Because how often has have you seen people go, "Oh, I rolled a one on that damage roll." Well, let me turn that into a six real quick. Oh yeah, and all of a sudden, nope. <clears throat> yeah, this just sorry, can't do it. You suck. That is amazing. Now. Sagas. These are the bonus effects if you complete your special quest during the battle. Most of these are pretty easy. There's a couple that are moderately difficult, but 90% of these are super easy. <laughs> yeah. All right, first up, the Beast Slayer deed. All you have to do is kill a monster or a vehicle. Eh, somewhat di difficult, but with the ability of Beast Slayer, a lot easier mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you can now have a six inch aura of giving everybody else the same bonuses you have for killing monsters and vehicles yo that is awesome with what that can do for you is turn your whole unit of like wolfen or something along those lines into murderous things against all their vehicles or monsters like if you're going against nids or mm -hmm. demons or even you know, somebody that brought, you know, Imperial Knights or Chaos Knights, you're going to just rampage through those. Absolutely. It's going to do some damage, man. It's awesome. Yeah. I love, I love that one. Especially if you're taking a guy that's already hitting hard, like you're hitting with a Frost Axe or something, hitting at Strength 7, you're wounding on, with that plus one to wound, you're wounding on twos. Now you just turned all your wolf in that we're hitting on, like, Moon. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna oh, yeah. exponentially increase their damage like, output. Like it's it's awesome. Oh yeah, anything that's big out there is gonna run. <laughs> it's gonna do, it's gonna do some great damage. Oh yeah. Next up is oh we do we got Wolfkin here. So deed of the Wolfkin, an enemy model is destroyed as the result of a melee attack made by this model. So all you gotta do. Kill one little model. Yep. Once you kill it, your saga is an aura. While the friendly space was core unit is within six inches of this model, that unit is always treated as having made a charge move for the purposes of a shock assault ability. So they always get plus one to <clears throat> attack on their attacks. Which is just amazing. Like, these guys... They they have figured out a way. This is part of that ingenuity portion um, for Games Workshop. They they figured out a way to really give extra attacks without handing them out, but making you earn them in some way. And then once you're able to like once you complete these, their abilities are so useful. Like it's it's worth going out of your way to make sure you take care of it. Oh, yeah. Next up, Warrior Born. This is probably the hardest one out of all of these to get. Ooh. To get this one, you have to destroy a character model with a melee attack. Hardest one by far. 
but very doable. I've gone character hunting quite often, taken out characters with my characters. You just have to kind of go out of your way a little bit more for it, but it's doable. It, it, it requires a lot more planning. Yep, but that gives everybody within six inches of him strike first as well, though. Which, so if you have him with a pack of guys or a couple packs of guys near him, no one is going to be able to attack you first. Yeah, that is nuts. Because it's space with core units, yeah. Yep. Anyone within six inches, like, dude, that's great. And like I said, all of these bonuses a lot of these are going to take place because you're just doing that anyway. So as long as you put the right person to, you know, the, right. the right warlord to the right saga, you're, you're going, man. You're going to be good. Um, the next one is Hunter. So Deed of the Hunter is successfully charge an enemy unit with this model. That's all you got to do. All right. If you're playing Space Wolves, <clears throat> that one's uh, auto. Just it's done automatically. There is literally not a way you're not automatically getting that one done. Correct. <laughs> um, while a friendly Space Wolves core unit is within six inches of this model, um, that unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which they advanced... Um, while the, while a friendly space was core unit with the swift hunters ability is within six inches of this model, that unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which they fell back. So you get the ability to charge after advance and charge after falling back, depending on what, um, Q or what abilities the units have. Um, swift hunters allows you to do it if they've um if they've fallen back they can still charge and then without swift hunters it just has to be any space wolves core unit uh, will allow you to charge after the advance all right next up war of majesty now this one was kind of um interesting for the right. deed of it you have to have be within six inches of our objective markers range and be more than six inches out of your deployment zone. So you have to be out in no man's land or in the opponent's deployment zone. And you get this ability. It has to be at the start of your command phase as well. Yep. Now the big thing with this is probably one of the most powerful ones out there. Yeah. It gives everybody within six <clears throat> inches of him the automatic pass of morale tests. Yeah. That's Fearless is back. Which... I mean, if you can get this one off, then that takes that takes a lot of weight off your shoulders if you're running, like, a bigger packs of, of Marines. Um, Especially with the game being very center of the table heavy, like King of the Hill-esque. Now your guys, there's no chance of anybody running. Yes, that you, you oh. become... You become the juggernaut, and it's going to be really goddamn hard to knock you off that hill. My favorite is back on this one. This one is uh, Resolve of the Bear. So that guy that got that six up, feel no pain. He gets he gets the deed of the bear, which means he has to lose wounds. As long as he loses wounds, just a single wound is all he needs to lose. Yep. He gets the Saga of the Bear. While a friendly space was core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit would lose a wound, roll a d6. On a six up, the wound is not lost. So they get a six up, feel no pain, bubble around the Warlord. Which is awesome, because core units with a six up, feel no pain bubble are a pain in the ass. For anyone trying to chop through them to be able to take any of those areas that are locked down by OBSEC. Oh, yeah. We're all looking at you, you cheaters of Iron Hands. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Nurgle. God. Uh, Nurgle, Iron Hands, pains in the ass. And they're both Nurgly to me. Right. I think um, Iron Hands need to brought, be brought up as heretics. Oh, <laughs> man. Blood Angels. Blood Angels don't even have an army yet, and he's calling people out. <laughs> All right, so that's the sagas and warlord traits, all awesome stuff. <laughs> um, they got some special relics just for them. They also got a couple of the generic special issue war gears, 
that are specific to them. I would uh, say I would say ones of note that probably the armor of rust is still there for all of you and boys of that. So you still have the enemy strikes last, and you get the two up, four up. That is the, from what from my understanding, in a lot of uh, past base of armies that I've seen or lists that I've seen. That's typically something that's included in every list I've seen. So, I'm right. I'm guessing that's an auto take. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure though. Um, we're not going to cover every of one of these, but um, they got like Fireheart kind of caught my eye a little bit, <laughs> just because that was kind of nifty this is looking. Like the biggest douchebag weapon I think I've seen in a long while. It's a pl super powerful plasma pistol. 18 inch range, pistol 1, strength 9, neg 4 AP with 3 damage. Yeah, you pop a hole in someone's dumb ass. Oh, yeah. Like, that thing is badass. Uh, let's see. Um, another great one was uh, Mountain Breaker Helm. Especially if you're going for the character hunting and stuff. Oh, what is that that would be amazing. Um, oh, after you do yeah. your close combat attacks, before you consolidate, on a 2-up... Um, the enemy that is within on um, close combat range of you takes D3 mortal wounds. Yeah. Just an additional D3 mortal wounds after you just kicked him in the junk. Yep, you just drop mortal wounds and then tell him to go to hell. Oh, yeah, that's great for character hunting. Or if you're going for, like, the monster and beast slayer, or the beast slayer. All right. Just help you kill that stuff a little bit quicker because it's stuff that you're not moving away from if you didn't kill it, so. Oh, that one was really like the the pelt of Beowulf. Oh, and it's not Beowulf. It's Beowulf. B A L E. Don't we know when get pissy? Each time a melee attack is made against the bear, subtract one from the attack's hit roll and wound roll. That thing is Aye. just awesome. Like, Aye. goddamn. If you want to make a super tanky guy, make him of <laughs> the bear and throw that on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's a, You're going to have a super tanky guy out in the middle. There's someone <laughs> going to hate you. Uh, and the last one of the actual relics that we're going to cover, which is one that really caught my eye, was the Storm's Eye. Bad pun. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, that's the psychic. Yep. Um, after you cast the psychic power, roll d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches of your caster. And on a 4-up, that enemy unit suffers a, a mortal wound. Not bad at all. You just you cast something, and because you cast something, everything within 12 inches, all the enemy take a mortal wound on a 4-up. I think that's pretty good. That's a great one, especially if you're being really aggressive with your librarians. Or rune priests, in oh, this case. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're aggressive with everything. This entire army is oh, yeah. made to run across the board. You're in their face. You're already casting all your powers. You're dealing, you know, if you're around like three to four units up in their front lines, you just dealt potentially two to three more mortal wounds out there that weren't already out there. Right. Oh, that's just amazing. Um, now, the big thing with your special issue war gear, this is the stuff that you can now give to one of your sergeants or pack leaders. Um, so this is kind of cool. Stuff. Most of the stuff is um, your normal mundane stuff, but they did add a couple that are just exclusive for Space Wolves. They got Morkai's teeth bolts. Instead of firing your gun normally, you fire the, a single shot of this. As long as you hit... Everybody else that shoots at that target gets the ability to reroll ones to wound. That's not bad at all. Um, that Wolftail Talisman is really good too. In the psychic phase, each time a model in the barrier's unit would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. Roll a d6, and on a four up, the wound is not lost. That is really good, especially for giving that to your sergeant that's out there. <laughs> yeah. And then frost weapons, I guess, are probably most most spaceful players are uh, familiar with the frost weapons, but they get plus one to the strength and damage characteristics of the weapon that's frost. That thing, like, that's just awesome. I mean, and then the last one that's yeah. exclusive to them is the runic weapon for your librarians. Um, add one to the deny the witch, as well as plus one to the strength. Ooh, that's really good too. Plus one to deny the witch. And it's plus one to the strength of the weapon that you're wielding. 
So if you're wielding, you know, a force axe with your librarian, that'll bump you up to like a plus three strength then, right? No, oh, that's that's all they need. That's all they needed. <laughs> that's awesome right. though. Definitely cool stuff that makes that um, those generic ones a little bit better, especially since you can throw them on a sergeant or this this portion things. here. I haven't uh, this portion here. I haven't had the chance to take a look through, um, but I'm assuming that they've get, they've gotten at least one or two to get a little love well, in the psychic powers. The psychic powers. Um, first one up is your living lightning. It's your basic, you know, alternate to smite. But it has a chance to deal um, additional mortal wounds to a close unit to the target. Okay. So on a two up, you deal one mortal wound. If you roll a five or better on that roll, it does D3 to the uh, extra unit. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Nothing too fancy. It's on a six up to cast. So it's a nice solid one. Potential to do um, bonus mortal wounds to an enemy besides your target. Yeah. Then we have, uh, what is that, uh, murder, Murderous Hurricane? Yeah, that's the one that stops a single unit, if they're in terrain, from firing Overwatch, and they strike last. Holy Jesus. That's terrible. Uh, next what about up, the Tempest, or Tempest Wrath? That one is select a unit, and they are neg one for all their attacks. <sighs> These guys got so good. Oh, yeah. Instincts Awoken. Now, this one is really cool. Now, I know um, I've said this before, but dear God, I hope Blood Angels get this one as well. Added in somehow. <laughs> um, what this one does is allows a single unit to act oh. as if they were in the Assault Doctrine. That's really good. And if the Assault Doctrine is active... They get rending added to their weapons. So on rolls of sixes, they get an additional AP one. Jesus, that is Man, awesome. These guys, these guys are so good, dude. Uh, what is what is Stormcaller? This one gives your caster a uh, light cover aura. So everything within six inches counts as light cover. That's around. really good. That's like their only defensive one, and it is still. Really amazing. And if you pair that up with that one that, you know, gives the neg one to hit, the relic. Oh my god. Cast a second power. Or no, that was a stratagem. Use that stratagem with that. So it gives neg one to hit and light cover. You just created a defensive dome around your stuff that, that make really your stuff nice. way tanky. And that that's what you need for midfield when... You don't have anything near you and you're trying to close that distance like that's awesome now the next one jaws it, of the world wolf yeah this is the anti-horde psychic power what does it do you roll a d6 for every model in the unit jesus so the more models the more damaging this is going to be right on a roll of a six up you deal a mortal wound if you roll a nine or better on your casting attempt you get a plus one to that roll, so you can get it on fives. No shit. That's not bad at all. You get 30 pack of something, you need to start dropping damage. Oh, yeah. Look out, boys. Run from their psychers. <laughs> mm hmm. Because you can wipe literally, t on average, 10 boys off of a unit without much trouble with that. Oh, yeah. Well, the, if, if you get above a nine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um,. With these, so, um, I was gonna say with these ones, did you did you have a chance to review all these yet? Because I'm really curious what their new missions are. Or the, oh, I'm the sorry. secondaries. Yeah, secondaries. Now, secondaries with the space wolves, um, they only have two categories of them added, and each one has two. So they have purge them enemy ones. And no mercy, no respite categories. So, what do you do in the purge then? I mean, what is that? Glory kills? Glory kills is the first one. If you select this objective, you score victory points as follows. You score two points if any character was destroyed. If no character was destroyed but suffered three or more wounds, you score one point instead. 
Oh, okay. So it you're guaranteed to at least get one point as long as you're trying to whack a mole the characters. That's not bad. There's a lot of there's there's a lot of armies with a lot of characters right now. Now the bonus with this one, in my opinion, is that the second half of this, you score three victory points if you slay a monster. Oh. And if you do three or more wounds to a monster, you score one victory point. That's instead. Not bad. So with this one, you're able to go out there and whack a mole characters and monsters. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Oh, yeah, that definitely gives you a few more targets, and it this is definitely more of what needs to be out there to balance out those secondaries, which are like um very underwhelming right now. Like the headhunter, since most people can't take a lot of characters now, headhunter is just kind of you know down the tubes for killing the characters. Well, that's just it on some, but then you have other then you have other armies and stuff that. Um, I know sisters, for example, sisters, they have a lot of um, character models in their armies. Um, the uh, the Tau, if I remember correctly, are allowed multiple commander suits now. And so I believe those... No, they're still out there one commander per detachment, but... Well, no, but it's different suits now because they had a... Before I know one of the one of the problems that they had was the uh, you had one commander but you have all these suits that you could take right and only one commander but they allowed like a commander per suit or something like that now I forget eh, but that's not here um, that here but it just there's 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 definitely areas that it can be used but this one gives you the versatility to where you can score a lot more absolutely which I kind of like the looks of. Oh, and those D-Bag Harleys. They get a lot of characters, too. Now, there is a note on this. Um, if you attack a monster that's a character, you have to decide which way you want to score it. Oh. So it does not double dip. Apparently, the monsters don't go both ways. <laughs> and the next one is Heroic Challenge. At the start of the command phase, select one Space Wolf character model at your first character or command phase, mind you. And you issue a challenge to a character model on the opponents. Alright, if either player does not have a character, it must be their warlords that are selected. Alright, you score five victory points at the end of the battle for each of the following that has been achieved. The model accepted the challenge was destroyed. The model accepted the challenge was destroyed as a result of a melee attack. And then the final one, uh, the model accepted challenge was destroyed as a result of a melee attack made by the model issued the challenge. Oh. So. So, destroyed by a melee attack gets you 10 points. If it's destroyed by a melee attack from the character that issued the challenge, then it's 15. And if that character was destroyed, it's 5 points regardless. That's super cool. So, I like that one. I know it's you hard are to pull the off. one I'm going to kill. <laughs> yeah, it might be hard to pull off, especially because people might keep it, keep them back in the um, the strategic reserve or whatever. But I think that would be super cool one to get to pull off. Well, this is at the command phase. They can't strategic reserve it. This is after the battle starts. Is when you select that target. Oh, this is true, huh? So that. It, Mean. Oh man, yeah, timing is everything. That's great. Oh yeah, that is awesome. I like that one. Let's see. No Mercy, No Respite section is a mighty saga. So if you select this objective, you score two points at the end of each battle round for each of the following achieved by your Space, Wolf, Space Wolves Warlord. For a maximum of five victory points with the shit? Per round. Oh, okay. So... Your warlord has to go on a murder hobo run, is what it's like. And there's a ton of different options for this. So this is definitely, you know, you want to make sure you have a very survivable warlord and or an apothecary running right behind him. (laughs) Yes. Because this is about to get nuts. An enemy monster or vehicle loses a unit, loses any wounds as a result of a melee attack made by this warlord. An enemy monster or vehicle unit is destroyed as a result of a melee attack by this warlord. 
An enemy character is destroyed as the result of a melee attack made by this warlord. Five or more models were destroyed as a result of attacks made by this warlord. At the start of your command phase, this warlord is within range of an objective marker that is wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. Holy Christ. So if you're shoving your warlord down your opponent's throat, you will score points. Yes. And if you take, like, the Monster Hunter one, man, Warlord trait with him, dear God, you're going out there and destroying stuff. Yeah, there's something crazy is going to be happening. Wow. And then Warrior's Pride. That one actually looks really good, too. Score three points at the end of your turn if two or more Space Wolf units in your army are within melee range or have completed a charge this turn. Yep. So, wow, that is just awesome. That really is. That gives you, as long as you're in your face or in their face, you can get points. Yeah, and it's it is exactly what this it's it's what this chapter does. Like, um, the wow. only hard part with that one is that that counts turn one to get the max on that one. So. That's going to be kind of a hard push, but that'll be a solid, like, 9-pointer, if not a 12-pointer pretty easy. Oh, for the Warrior Pride? Yeah. Well, I would say um, if two or more units from your army are within engagement range, yeah. I would say that is doable at the beginning. I, I'm sure... It's a little uh, bit of a push, but you could probably do it. Yeah. You definitely would have to... Um, or manufacture your army just for that. Maybe get some scout units up there so you can get out there and assault right away with those. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That'd be about the best way you could do that one. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of hard-pressed <coughs> for oh, that man. turn one. Yeah, a couple Invictors would be great for the beginning. Invictors or Infiltrators or something like that. Oh, and with all the extra attacks, Invictors would be a shit for this. Oh, yeah, but all these are pretty solid. I... I'm really liking the theming of the secondaries to the army. I hope they keep that trend up. And I know there's a lot of naysayers out there that are like complaining that, oh, my army doesn't have the ability to select these. Oh, hush you. When you yeah. get your book, it's going to be amazing for you. I say nay to the naysayers. It's um, not all, all armies are not created equal. And having secondaries that fit the way your army is built to play is amazing. Now, come on. Would Tao ever take half of these if they had access to them? Seriously. If they had access to all of these, they would not a single Tao player would take these. Come on. Seriously. I think they would take Warrior Pride because they'd, they'd always be getting charged. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying they'd be within range. Uh, but in all seriousness, you know, it's these are themed around a melee close combat army. They're not designed for shooting armies. They again, it's just like the other, it's the other decks is the um, where just just the uh, the codexes for like Marines and Necrons. And it gave me a lot of hope to see this stuff coming later, and it hasn't let me down with this yet either. With the oh, yeah. Space Wolf supplement here, definitely amazing, and I hope they keep this trend up. Now, the Crusade rules, they have a ton of that stuff, too. And we still haven't touched Crusade yet. These guys are probably going to be, like, the the cornerstone of Crusade. Oh, they're probably going to be amazing. Sagas and all that oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And then they have a name generator for all of those out there, so you can make your Gunnar Blood Tooth. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> if you like naming your rando characters. Whatever you want to name your poodle. All right. Um, now going into the things, uh, data sheets for your army. Um, from what I've initially skimmed, my first disappointment was in this book, unfortunately. They do not have a Supreme Commander for Space Wolves. Mm, Russ, Russ is too scared to come out to play. Um, I was hoping that, you know, maybe they'd give the named Chapter Master the Supreme Commander ability. But he does not have that. I was very sad about that. But other than that, that's my only complaint with the book. 
Literally. Oh, wait, I have one other sub complaint. They didn't premiericize the characters yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm totally looking forward to everything getting primarized, so to speak, just because they uh, they need to they need to be stronger, bigger, faster in in the new in the new age of space marines here. Oh yeah. Um, but other than that, um, all your characters are still here. You still have Logan Grimnar, Najal, Stormcaller. Grimnar still has a bazillion attacks if he rides his sleigh. Without the sleigh, he's still pretty brutal. Yeah, Santa's crazy strong. Oh, yeah. Um, Jorn the Fellhand, still your evil Dreadnought character of smashiness. Do any of the Dreadnoughts for them. Like, it is... I told you guys, Dreadnoughts. So, and he still has his 5-up Feel No Pain, as well as he got Duty Eternal, so... Just amazing. Uh oh, dang. Yeah, the the uh, data sheets here. Um, a lot of people, a lot of you guys know the stats, or at least close to the stats. I mean, uh, most everyone can pull them up now because of uh, how long the book has been out, and because of the leaks that were given, but. The just some of the abilities that they gave to these characters, um, and and not even not even just for them, but like what we've read off already, they've they've done some work here to make this army some just fierce, and I love it. And one of my personal favorite characters is still here, and he can still throw his hammer, Arjak, which is their version of like Thor. He can throw his hammer for a shooting attack. I would. <laughs> I would take him just for that. That is just so badass to me. <laughs> I would take him just for that because that, like, that strength, that's a 12, 12 inch strength 10. Oh, Head yeah. on twos, AP three, three damage. Oh, and it does plus one damage if it's against a monster or a character. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, yeah. He's just a cool character. Um, Ragnar, which is their only Primaris guy, I believe, at the moment. Yeah, he gets uh, like 732,000 attacks. Yeah, it's base 7 attacks, and then he gets 3 additional attacks for Shock Assault. And then, let's see. You're going to need a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be messing that one up. All right. Definitely awesome. Harold Death Wolf, like and by the way, I'm also a big fan of the not only the whole like Norse look or the 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 Nordic shit, but the um, the wolves that they have, the sculpts that they've done from GW, like they just they look so good. I'm a I'm a big fan of them, and I don't give GW a whole lot of props all the time because typically me and them are at odds. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, so, w Wolfguard battle leaders there. I'm trying to see all the characters like Canis Wolfborn, all the named guys are still there. I don't think they lost anybody. It doesn't look like anyone's been lost. Wolflord. As a matter of fact, there's some extra names in here that I'm not familiar with. Wolfguard battle leader on Thunderwolf. Oh yeah, blood claws. All right, then it has all your core troops, which I know everybody was freaking out a little about because you know, like, oh no, the core marine book didn't said we couldn't use any of the you know core old old classic marines, but your gray hunters and all that fun stuff is still there. You got your wolf guard. Oh, Lucas the trickster. There's him hiding. Let's see, does he still have his um, last laugh? Okay, in the fight phase, if this model is destroyed by a melee attack by an enemy model, roll off with your opponent. If you win the roll off, oh, that unit, enemy's unit, suffers D6 mortal wounds. Dang. Now, that's still really strong. It's toned down from what it used to be, but it's still really strong. Back in the day, used to put the large blast template on him. And anything that was hit by it was just removed from the game. Nice. 
It was well, one thank, of the, thank God they toned it down a little bit. <laughs> Jesus. The, uh... What else we got here? Like, uh, the Grey Hunters, Lucas, Wolfguard. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all the all the old guys that I've come to know, but... Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see, the Wolfguard Terminator is still there. Oh, they did do the Hounds of Morkai, which are... Now, these are their new... They're the Reavers, if I remember right. They're the special version of Reavers. Which, I, if I remember right, there was nothing special about them, was there? Oh, there was a huge thing special with these. They get um, runic totems. Um, they get uh, four up, feel no pain against psychic powers, oh, well, as well cool. as they get Mordex Howl, which is an aura. Psychers that are within 18 inches of this unit subtract one from their psychic tests. Oh, well, that's true. And if they're within six inches of this, it's an additional one from the psychic tests. Well, that's pretty damn good. Yep. Um, models in this mo unit also ignore Lookout Sir if the enemy is a Psyker. Oh, so they go, they go hunting for some Psykers, huh? Well, keep in mind, these guys were made to hunt the Thousand um, Suns. Suns, which are very famous for Psykers. Yeah. So, guess what? They have a unit that is very brutal against them. Well... What else we got? Um, let's see. Wolfen are there. I heard a lot of people complaining that these guys got weaker, and I don't feel they really got weaker. I know the attack twice strat is gone. Well, from what but everyone said, that they were nerfed. There was the attack twice strat, and then they can't move in advance and then assault. Well, you can if you get that one saga going, remember? Right, but they lost their in uh, innate ability to do it. Well, it means you just got to work for it a little bit more. It's not as much as a gimme. Oh, I just take Thunderwolf Cow. <laughs> um, um, Dreadnoughts. These, these guys are still pretty awesome. They still have the Death Frenzy, Bestial Rage. They can't perform actions. So, listen, I'm still used to like old Krons. So, Anyone that's got something that does better than pew pew once, like oh. it's I'm I'm excited about it's a it's a good unit to me. Um, Wolf and Dreadnought, uh, which I'm not oh, sure what that. This about. is huge for them. The Wolf and always count as being in the Assault Doctrine. That's really good. With Savage Killers, if you benefit from Combat Doctrines, the Assault Doctrine is treated as being active for your army for that attack. That's four, that's five attacks. And it counts as always um, charging for the um, shock assault as well. So they definitely got new abilities, I think, from what they used to have. I just don't stand next to them. Um, I know, you know, it's a big sad thing that they don't innately do every trick they used to, but you can still get them to advance in assault if you work for it a little bit. And there's enough really cool shit there. Like, you can... You can still like you can still make some magic happen. They have an eight without, inch move, guys. Come on, you can still make a lot of charges out there. <laughs> yeah, you can make magic happen without investing too much. That's I think they're still good. Oh, hopefully they're pointed appropriately. Yep, um, Wolf and Dreadnought. I didn't know know they had one. They might have had one last edition. I don't know. It's, if it was That's that a new one to me. to not talk about or not know about, that means... Um, it probably was there, knowing how things are, but because it doesn't say Primaris on it. So. Yeah, they, they probably... Everyone probably just shunned it. <laughs> <laughs> but they have that there. It has Murder Lust, Dirty, Duty Eternal. Three up, four up. I mean... It's yeah, still good, solid. It all dreadnoughts got amazing. Murder Fang is still up there. You got units of cyber wolves or frenzy and wolves that you can mix with the cyber wolf. Uh, Thunder Wolf Cav still there, still amazing, especially with those new strats. Yeah. Sky Claws, Long Fangs. Everyone's go to with the Long Fangs. The um, brutal flying gunboats of doom still there. Their gunships are fucking impressive. Oh yeah, like goddamn impressive. 
And then um, all your weapon profiles are in the very back. And that pretty much, pretty much covers it. it then you got all your points listing back here. Um, for the most part, it looks like most of the stuff is about average. I unfortunately don't know the points differences to tell you any big points changes without looking at a previous edition. The gunships are still very expensive. I th 300 points base. And then oh, if you do the upgrade or weapon swaps, they cost you a bit more. So that explains why they're, you know, a lot of people shun away from them a bit. Mm -hmm. But they are still brutal. I could see putting in one just to be able to give you some hard hitting power because those guns are some heavy hitters up there. Yeah. Um, the uh, looks like to me the Thunderwolf Cav are pointed pretty solid. They're 45 points per model. And then if you look at, like, say, throwing a, a Storm Shield and a Power Fist, for example. I'm not sure if that's the best combo, but that's that, that would be uh, 15 additional points. You can even do, let's like, say, a Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield, the traditional. That's 20 additional points. So that makes them 65 per um, I would say that that's a that that's a pretty expensive unit overall, but uh, if you put them at a five pack and run them around, I think that's a sweet spot, especially if that one stratagem. Always the five pack, um, but I think they're pointed solid, like, and the thunder hammer may not be where it's at anymore. I know I've seen a lot about storm or about lightning claws. And because those things are super sweet, they they went back to being as cool as they were back in the day when I was first started. I think the Power Fist is solid. And I think people are just underestimating its potential. Because it has the higher AP at 2 damage. Mm -hmm. I think that's solid. I'm a, I'm a fan of Lightning Claw, so I just... Oh, yeah. Well, you could go Lightning Claw and Storm Shield, too. And that's still do it. Reroll Wounds. Yeah. With those fucking landing claws, like, god damn, that fucking shit's badass. But, you know, there's tons of play out there. It gives you a lot of things to look at. So. I think, um, I guess, overall, what do you think about the book? And how, how do you feel, how do you feel about your Blood Angels coming up? I definitely, this gives me 100% hope for the Blood Angels. Instead of being a, hey, look, there's a Smash Captain, and that's the only thing anybody ever mentioned when they talked about Blood Angels. Right. I think it's going to be a very solid and well-rounded book. This made Space Wolves look very solid. All their old tricks or, or their feeling of their old units are still solid. They got the pluses to, on the wounds for everything. This makes me feel like that it was, it was the Space Wolves from back in the day, the ones that really started it off that drew that following of people that wanted to play them. Um, at least to, that's what it feels like to me. I, I really right. like the book. Um, I would have to say, because we're talking, because we're talking Marines in a chapter that's, uh, that's almost a mirror of, uh, of the Blood Angels, what is one unit that you want to come back for the Blood Angels to be just an amazing unit? What would be your top pick? Uh, I really would love to see Liam Martis come back, personally. Yeah? Because his dumbed-down version in the past two editions, or in the last edition, was terrible. I was uh, I was expecting to hear Sanguinary Guard, but I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm looking forward to seeing all of it roll out. Like, there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of good stuff. Uh, with all of this I've seen in here, there's so many of like the my personal favorites characters out of here. Lucas the Trickster's fairly reasonable. He's an 80 point, you know, you know, kamikaze bomb out there. He's a solid character. Mm hmm Can nuke. You got Arjak at 120 points playing Thor out there. That's not bad either. 120 points. Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminator character running out there and smashing stuff. With the old Thunder Hammer, but does bonus damage against characters and monsters. Yeah, it just, it's, there's, there's so oh, yeah. much good stuff, guys. Like, I, I, after going through it all with you, um, I hope that whoever lost the faith Ooh. in the last Space Wolves Codex that came out, 
if someone tells me this is trash, I'm going to slap them because this is no. gold. Now, here's something. Logan on his sleigh is 180. Off his sleigh is 155. So for a few points more, you I get it way sleigh. faster and with tons more wounds. Uh, take, him, take him on the sleigh because it'd be better to shave your points elsewhere. I think that's awesome. The only thing is you can't hide them, but Space Wolves, I don't feel you hide Not your characters. All. It's all about... <laughs> For a handful of points, getting a ton more attacks and higher toughness and faster movement. Yeah. So basically what's uh, going to happen now is as soon as we kick you guys out of here, I'm going to go to making up a Space Wolves list because that would be really cool. Just uh, theory craft some stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. But, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed everything with it. We have uh, we like that whole like and subscribe thing. Oh, yeah. We're loving all of your support out there. We have plenty of paint videos geared up and ready to go. There's a lot There's a lot we want to share with you. A lot of those experiences so that you don't have to waste or test any of your own stuff. We, we, we love what we do, guys. So right. Keep gaming and have fun. And until next time. Hell yeah. Like and subscribe. See us.